What's up, everybody? And in today's news desk, we actually got an update from an upcoming Xbox exclusive. Apparently, this game saw some massive changes under the Xbox umbrella, and it sounds like this is for the better. In fact, Xbox has done a pretty good job with a few of their acquisitions and just improving their games. Also, Take Two CEO had something very interesting to say about the Nintendo Switch 2 and the possibility of it not having backwards compatibility. This is your news dose, and uh, let's just go get right into it, starting off with Baldur's Gate 3, because check this out, it is now the highest rated game for 2023. I mean, going into this year, if you ask most people, I'm sure a lot of people would have probably predicted something like Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, but no, right now, Baldur's Gate 3 is backing up its insane launch success with a 97 overall score on Metacritic. That is just absolutely insane. Now, to be fair, this is only with 14 reviews, and it could still change, but this is just so crazy to think about. I mean, the fact that this is happening in an absolutely loaded year with games like Zelda, you have Resident Evil 4, Diablo, Street Fighter, and the list just kind of goes on and on and on, it just makes it even more impressive. I'm not really overly surprised by this, though, just because this is coming from Larian Studios. If you played their last game, you know that it was a very good game. Divinity Original Sin 2 did score a 93 as well. So, you know, they were already a top-tier RPG studio, but now a lot more people are actually noticing. Over the weekend, its peak hike in current players cracked the top 10 games ever made on Steam, which... I think that that's where the surprise kind of comes in, because a lot of people wasn't really expecting it to take off the way it has. Even the Larian Studios director said that they were surprised by its huge success. They were actually apparently worried that it wouldn't sell many copies at launch because it's been in early access for the last two years. Well, they were wrong, because it's had one of the most successful Steam launches of all time at 800,000 plus concurrent players, and for a very, very good reason. Baldur's Gate 3 is not only proving to be a surprise Game of the Year candidate, but it's also proving to be a generational RPG. Larian Studios does it again. Moving on, Take-Two CEO responded to some of the harsh but accurate feedback regarding the new but old Red Dead Redemption PlayStation 4 and Switch ports. To much of our surprise, there was very little effort with these ports, and fans aren't exactly all that happy. But that didn't really stop Take-Two from charging fans a whopping $50. Well, Take-Two was asked about this, and according to the CEO, its price is quote-unquote check this out, commercially accurate. Yeah, so about that. I'm just going to go and throw this out there. You can actually pick up a brand new physical copy on Amazon right now for Xbox, the Game of the Year edition for Red Dead Redemption, and well, what do you know? It's $30. And oh, by the way, this also comes with everything that the PlayStation 4 and Switch ports comes with, plus it's also enhanced via Xbox's backwards compatibility. It runs in 4K resolution and it actually has online multiplayer. So it is a better overall version and it's also cheaper. Kind of weird for a commercially accurate price, but you know, I'll let you all decide if you think it's worth that $50 price tag or if you think it's just a blatant cash grab. Now, one thing the game community always likes to talk about is Xbox's management of their studios. They've not exactly had a stellar reputation in the past, so what about all those new acquisitions under the Xbox umbrella? Are they actually in good hands? And I'd personally say over the last four or so years, Xbox has made a lot of improvements. Xbox has consistently put out high quality products. Now, some of these games are a little bit on the smaller side of things. Games like Gears Tactics, Pentiment, uh, Grounded, Hi-Fi Rush, you have Ori, Flight Simulator. Uh, but all of these games, they have been reviewed well, including Halo Infinite, Age of Empires, and Forza Horizon. I think the quality from Xbox has been there, but their AAA output that's what we need to see increase. But going back to the question, are these studios in good hands? And, and well, actually, another studio has come out revealing how Xbox has helped improve their game, and that's none other than Obsidian and Avowed. This game is planned for a 2024 release, but apparently prior to the acquisition in 2018, Avowed was a very different game than what we know today. 
According to Obsidian, they were originally pushing Avowed to be a multiplayer game because that would be easier to sell to publishers. They noted that you need something interesting to sell to publishers, and its multiplayer made it stand out. It was different, but over time, they realized that they weren't focusing on what they were best at, and that's making single-player RPGs with interesting characters. And that, that's where the Xbox acquisition comes in. Being acquired by Xbox actually gave them the ability to refocus and do what they do best. They now have that creative freedom and they're no longer forcing themselves to make a multiplayer game just to satisfy a publisher. That's why Avowed is now a single player game today. It is because of Xbox. And that has been a pretty consistent benefit under the Xbox umbrella. They're not forcing their studios to do something that they don't want to do. They trust their studios and they give them that creative freedom. That's why we have games like Pentiment, Hi-Fi Rush, and something like Grounded. Now, a lot of publishers out there, they might have shut these games down, but Xbox, they promote that creativity. Now, we can argue that that's not always for the best. Maybe they should have stepped in during Redfall's development. That's fair enough, but overall, it has made for some unique and high-quality games so far, and I imagine that this is really just the beginning. I'd say that that's one of the really interesting things about Xbox's reputation, though. Some people only want to highlight their past failures. The Xbox One had a rough generation, but we've already seen on various occasions that Xbox has kind of come back to form, and they have helped some of these studios post-acquisition. And I'll just kind of run through a few examples here. Double Fine and Psychonauts 2. Xbox increased the budget of Psychonauts 2 and delayed that game so Double Fine could restore cut content. The results? Psychonauts 2 ended up receiving an 87 overall score on Metacritic, and it was also a Game of the Year candidate. Then there's Wasteland 3 and NXL. Once again, after being acquired, Xbox increased its budget so they could add more features, including a fully voiced game. This is a direct benefit for consumers. Wasteland 3 then also received an 85 overall score on Metacritic and was lauded as one of 2020's best RPGs. Then, of course, we have to talk about Starfield, their biggest release of 2023. The thing about this game is that Bethesda, they wanted to release Starfield much earlier, but Xbox, they came in and stepped in and said, no, take your time and let's get things right. And you're already seeing the results in the trailer. The visuals and character models got a massive improvement from last year, and this wouldn't have happened if it weren't for Xbox. Now, we'll see how this game turns out and if it's received well or not, but without a doubt, Starfield is in a much better position now under the Xbox umbrella than what it would have been if it released last year, and that is under Xbox's watch. And it's also important to keep in mind just how difficult that decision was, especially last year when their first party lineup was a little bare bones in terms of AAA releases. Still though, even with that, Xbox made the tough decision, they ate the short term repercussions and delayed it to ensure a better quality finished product day one. What's that quote from Miyamoto? A rush game is forever bad, but a delayed game is eventually good. Well, Xbox applied that under a lot of scrutiny, and I mean a lot of scrutiny, which is something else I've always kind of found to be a little bit ridiculous. You can't win with some people. Everybody wants everything immediately. But the truth is, a lot of times, if you want something good, yeah, there's a little patience involved. But again, this is another way Xbox has helped a studio post-acquisition, and we're once again seeing that with Obsidian and Avowed. It is now a single-player RPG, just as fans hope to see from one of the most renowned RPG studios of all time, and this might not have happened without Xbox. Now, here's an interesting take from take 2 CEO. Might not have agreed with him earlier, but he did have some things to say about the Nintendo Switch 2 and the possibility of it not having backwards compatibility, and, uh, Let's just go and check out his response here. While he agreed a lack of backwards compatibility might temporarily boost software sales of games being resold on the Switch 2, he then continued on to say this, you need to give consumers what they want and optimize their experience, and you can't not deliver a feature you're able to deliver so as to maximize sales. That isn't fulfilling your contract with consumers. You have to do the very best you can for them. I suppose it's possible the lack of backwards compatibility could enhance your revenue for a period of time, but at what cost. I could have not said this better myself. This is the absolute perfect response, and he completely understands. It would make zero 
And I mean absolutely zero business sense for Nintendo to turn their back on their 130 million and growing Switch user base. As that original report claimed, Nintendo wants to bring over as many of these fans as they can, and backwards compatibility, it is a massive part of that. I mean, sure, like the Take-Two CEO said, some publishers can come back and resell remasters if they want to, but I don't really see how that's Nintendo's problem. See, the thing is, is that Nintendo has always predominantly been recognized for their first-party content. That's what sells their consoles. And Nintendo is a very unique company that can sell games for an extended period of time without price drops. They're one of the very few companies that can actually do this. Uh, just look at Mario Kart 8. This game is still topping the charts year in and year out, and it doesn't stop in Mario Kart. Breath of the Wild is still selling. You have Smash Ultimate. They're Pokemon games. They continue to sell very well, and the list just kind of goes on and on and on. Why would Nintendo want to cut those games off? Now, I doubt Nintendo would go back and remaster all of these games for their next Switch. Instead, I'm sure that they'd like to continue to sell more copies, and backwards compatibility would ensure that they could. I don't know, though. I, I think some people are kind of looking a little too into that original report. Uh, the way I personally read it is that some publishers might want Nintendo to ditch backwards compatibility for really their own greed, but... It never said that Nintendo was leaning in that direction. I honestly, I honestly, honestly doubt that they are. Nintendo has historically been good at doing backwards compatibility if they're at least one generation apart, and I, I don't expect the Switch 2 to be any different. I'm going to just go and call it right now. The Switch 2 will be backwards compatible, and if it's not, you can come back to this video and laugh in my face. On to our final topic though, PlayStation is rolling out their cloud game streaming service beta for the PlayStation 5, and in a bit of a surprise, it includes 4K resolution. Now you can choose to go lower, which might help your internet speed if it isn't capable. You can choose between 720p, 1080, 1440, or 4K, but 4K, this means that it's already going to have a higher resolution than xCloud offers today. And that's been around for a long time. So a little bit of a surprise here, but it will be interesting to kind of see how this performs overall, especially as it opens up to more and more people. The PlayStation 5's cloud service, though, will support their PlayStation Plus catalog. Fans will also be able to play game trials, which I think could actually be one of the better benefits here. And it'll also support select digital PlayStation 5 titles that players own. Now, the reason I like the idea of those game trials in specific is because cloud streaming on your PlayStation 5 allows fans to try a game out without downloading it. We, we've seen similar results on Xbox as well. This was brought up in the FTC trial, in fact, and those game trials is, is kind of an extended benefit of that. On to our poll of the day, though, I asked you all, what's the most you'd be willing to spend for an Xbox Series X Pro or a PlayStation 5 Pro? And as you can see, 37% being the majority voted for $500, 11% of you all voted for $550, 14% of you voted for $600, 5% voted for $650 to $700, and then 34% of you being a good portion said that they weren't interested at all. And I guess the way that some people can kind of look at this is that that higher price tag surely would mean a pretty significant upgrade. I mean, a $700 PlayStation 5 Pro, it better be a whole lot more powerful than the current PlayStation 5. But some people would be willing to pay that premium price as you're seeing here, and I can understand that. One of the dreams going into this generation was to have 4K resolution and 60 frames per second, but we rarely get those two together at the same time. It's usually one or the other, but now here recently, we're even starting to see 30 frames creep back in. Games like Starfield, Jedi Survivor, and Final Fantasy 16, these are basically 30 frames games. I mean, Starfield is very transparent about that, but these other two, they're basically 30 frames games as well, and some fans, I'm sure, would like to pay extra to get those back up to 60 frames. However, the majority of you all are hoping for no more than $500. Anyways, though, that's it for this episode, but if you liked the video, don't forget to bell notification and subscribe button for more content just like this. Also, if you'd like to support the channel through Patreon, thank you for making this content possible. Peace out.